A nation's health cannot be maintained properly without its own pharmaceutical industry. Up until quite recently, Russia was importing about a third of its medicines from abroad. The sanctions and other events have changed all that, and now, gradually, Russia is relying on its own pharmaceutical companies. But that doesn't mean to say the market's closed for foreigners. And that's a subject we talked about with Vikram Punia, the president of the pharmaceutical company here in Moscow a few days ago. Is your company actually importing pharmaceuticals into Russia or are you producing them here? We are a company which is uh, imp uh, making the drugs here uh, inside the country. We have uh, you know, five factories today. Right. Yeah, the, the, these factories are located from uh, uh, St. Petersburg to the Far East. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do different forms of pharmaceutical, including solid doses form, infusions, liquids, lifelized products and all. What about the raw materials you need to produce the things, the medicines? They're locally sourced or you, have to, you still have to import them? I think about 90% of the substances are imported at this moment, but things are changing. Things yeah. are changing, yeah. And uh, for example, we are investing about uh, 300 million dollars in the next three, four years time to make uh, the substances here in Russia. Mm -hmm. Basically, we are making the drugs to treat uh, serious, serious diseases like uh, HIV, like hepatitis, tuberculosis, uh, uh, oncology, dro oncology uh, diseases, mm -hmm. and autoimmune diseases. How difficult was it to receive permissions, the necessary legal permissions, to be able to do what you do? In the history, like uh, 1999 or 2000, uh, at that time, it, um, really, it was uh, very difficult mm -hmm. to get some permission. Things were very, not very transparent. And uh, there were many problems in uh, getting some permission for starting a new business. Mm -hmm. For us, for the startup, it was it was difficult really. But I can say that situation has changed totally now. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, getting this permission, receiving this permission from the government, if you are, if you do do the proper documentation, mm -hmm. I don't see any problems in uh, receiving any permission for construction, for clinical trials, for registration of the drugs. Now, Russian pharma companies are really doing high-tech products. In 2010, for, H for treatment of HIV, yeah. in Russia, around 90 plus percent of the drugs were imported. Wow. And today, yeah. Yeah. the situation is such that uh, more than 70 percent of the products are made in Russia. I see a, a Russian market as a Russian pharmaceutical market uh, as a fastest growing market in the world. The rate of growing of Russian market is around 13 percent per year. And one more thing I, I would like to say is that the level of corruption yeah. has gone so down. Right. And things are changing again in this field as well right. for more better situation. Russia now uh, is a country of opportunity, I can say. Next year, the world will be attracted to Moscow stadiums. Russians are preparing to hold one of the largest sporting events in the world. Now, football's always been popular here, but the championships that are about to be held will change the face of this city. The Soviet-style stadium, Dynamo, has been completely rebuilt, and the new arena has been constructed on the site of the former Tushina Airport. Next time on Capital Ideas Live, is there a life after the championship when everyone's gone home? Thank you very much for watching today's programme. I hope you've enjoyed it. Tune in again for next week's instalment. My name's John Harrison.